ASI is asking students a controversial question. The answer could have a major effect on campus culture. The campus skateboarding policy is under review and may soon change. Details ahead. And see what the Cal Poly Crops Club has put together for Halloween thrill seekers. 300 on Cal Poly's campus. You're watching Mustang News. Hello Cal Poly, I'm Aaron Bandler. And I'm Jenna Brown. You're watching our weekly half-hour broadcast of Mustang News. Cal Poly has long been known as a dry campus, but that may soon change with the proposed idea of a pub near the dining halls. Lisa Diaz looks into the campus alcohol policy. Someone said there should be a pub on campus. That is the breadth and depth of the discussion that we've had. A discussion that is buzzing around campus. Is that something students here would want as well? And if it is, then we'll start looking at the next steps. I mean, obviously you'd have to look into what is this dry campus policy? You know, what, what is the history behind that? Is that something that needs to change? But is Cal Poly a dry campus? It's one of those things that I think is still a policy in name, but not necessarily completely in practice. As of now, the idea of a pub on campus is all hypothetical. The further down road steps about logistics as well as what we would do to enhance student life around it are, haven't even been discussed. The location and type of venue have not been picked out either. It was myself and our executive cabinet actually formed the questions based on the input we had gathered from students or students we had talked to or issues we had heard across campus. ASI is conducting a survey to see what students think about this culture change. Putting a, a pub on campus could be something that allows us to um, further our efforts in promoting responsible alcohol consumption among our students if, if, it does some, if it does eventually come to life. Lisa Diaz, Mustang News. Opening a pub on campus will be a long and detailed process, and if it goes through, none of the current students will likely be around for the grand opening. If you are vacationing and looking for a temporary place to stay for a day or two, San Luis Obispo might not be the best place to visit. SLO is cracking down on homeowners that offer short-term renters a place to stay. Websites like Airbnb allow homeowners to advertise the extra rooms in their homes to short-term renters, some for a few days, some for up to a month. The only problem is, it's illegal. Especially, um, love to, to come here for that home experience. And it's so common in Europe and New Zealand that from what we've experienced, homestays are very common. So for them to come here and have that similar type of experience, it's just second nature for a lot of my travelers. Some say websites like Airbnb have a leg up on hotels because they do not charge a bed tax, though most homeowners are ready and willing to pay it. Slow County will be conducting a study on November 12th about the pros and cons of the city ordinance. In the meantime, homeowners caught breaking the rules on short-term rentals could face up to $5,000 in fines. $500. <laughs> Cal Poly's Wi-Fi should be working faster after a recent upgrade. Ashley Whittingham finds out how to get connected. Smartphones, laptops, and tablets. Mobile wireless devices can be seen almost everywhere on campus. A survey done by Cal Poly's Information Technological Services shows that the number of reported wireless devices has doubled since last year. IT Services says that the increase in these devices has impacted the efficiency of Cal Poly's secure Mustang wireless. The ability for people to connect to the Wi-Fi network uh, during times when uh, people are moving from class to class, like at the top of the hour, uh, we've seen some difficulty with that. To fix this problem, IT services switched their authentication system from Cisco Systems Incorporated to Aruba Networks. This upgrade allows more devices to connect at the same time. IT services said the switch to Aruba Networks should improve the Wi-Fi speed. Another change IT services is implementing is putting Wi-Fi access in the residence halls. Sarah Vista and Poly Canyon Village currently have Wi-Fi access. Jurison said so far he has heard little complaints. It, it looks like they're, the students are having great luck with the, the Wi-Fi in the residence halls. They seem very happy. Um, don't see many problems. But not all students are satisfied. The blackouts will happen and they don't last very long but they get kind of annoying so the Wi-Fi will not work for like three to five minutes. I'm just like sitting there waiting. Ashley Whittingham, Mustang News. 
IT services say they plan on making Wi-Fi access available in all residence halls by the beginning of the next school year. Cal Poly students put Learn by Doing to work by participating in the Slow iOS App Challenge. Participants had 48 hours to code their own app for the iPhone and iPad. A total of 12 teams participated in the challenge. Creators had three minutes to present their app to, a, to students and a panel of judges. They were judged on originality, technical implementation, and their final demo. The musical game, Drop Beat, was picked up as the best app in the competition. The app challenges users to replicate a beat. So we came up with an idea to solve that issue, and it's called Study Buddy. So just to save time, we're just going to enter a random schedule right there. So just to save a little time, but if it was actually used, you would type in your schedule. The three creators of each of Drop Beat each took home a new MacBook Air. One student organization is raising awareness for sexual assault victims. Safer held a closed line event Wednesday on Dexter Lawn. Students could come to the booth, get information, and paint an image or quote on a t-shirt. The shirts were then hung on a clothes line on Dexter Lawn to share their own thoughts and experiences with the community. And so we're basically, we have um, some posters up about women who have died um, due to their experiences, and then we're also just trying to raise awareness about the fact that there, you know, this does happen on Cal Poly's campus. SAFER is a Cal Poly community resource for people affected by violence. They offer sexual assault education for any class or organization. The policy preventing skateboards, longboards, and scooters could potentially be loosened. Students have complained about the policy before, so ASI President Jason Columbini is sending out a survey to find out students' opinions. If the majority wants the policy removed, ASI will review it with the University Police Department and the administration. Columbini says the opinions he has received about the skateboard policy so far are split 50-50. The survey will be sent out in the next two to three weeks. Coming up next on Mustang News, we will take a listen to the Cal Poly Marching Band. And a new bus schedule could make traveling to Farmer's Market a lot easier. The Mustang Band is busy practicing. Ashley DeVrin stopped by one of their rehearsals to find out what they're preparing for. You've seen them in the stands at Cal Poly Games. You've heard them rehearsing at the track. They support the Mustangs through the end of the game. And the football team especially, they notice when we play. When we play, they feel it out there. Huge, just cheer team for them. And we really support the team. And whenever they're doing well, we feel really, we always support them 100% no matter what. We perform for four NCAA teams volleyball, both basketball teams, and of course football. For many of our students, it is a great place to be and they learn a lot. Not just about music, not just about marching. It's about being part of a community and developing leadership skills and communication skills. We also strive to represent the university in the best ways that we can. Putting a lot of work into making something that only lasts a moment and then it's gone into the air, the sound, it leaves. Next time you can catch the Mustang Band is on Saturday at the football game against Northern Arizona for their new halftime show. Ashley DeVrent, Mustang News. The Mustang Band will be traveling to UC Davis with the football team on November 2nd. Cal Poly students filled the Pack Pavilion on Tuesday to see a famous filmmaker. Miguel Coyula talked about his experiences making movies in Cuba. Coyula spoke about how he edits his films and about the different processes he goes through to achieve his desired effect in his video clips. He also talked about the difficulties he has faced because of extreme filming restrictions imposed by the Cuban government. Everything from the start from the screenplay was subject to review and, and, and censorship, but now uh, they have realized that it's, uh, uh, I think the government has realized that it's a way of letting the steam go, that people do this, as long as they don't give it too much publicity. His Coyola showed his films at a film festival in Cuba. Citizens only heard of the festival through word of mouth because there is no internet in the country. Cal Poly alumna Valerie Huff is in the running for California's Young Engineer of the Year. The award presented through the American Society for Civil Engineers is given to young engineers making professional contributions to their society. Huff was nominated for the work she has been doing with local agencies and the Regional Water Quality Control Board. 
I've been assisting um, developing new stormwater regulations. Well, Cal Poly definitely gave me a, a great foundation for the work that I do. Huff has already advanced through two smaller regional competitions. She is now one of four people running for the state award. There's a new place on campus where students can go to get advice. It's called the Mustang Success Center. Students can talk with professional advisors and student counselors. The center has only been open since the beginning of the quarter, but the director of the center, Success Center says they've already helped solve many problems. The first couple weeks we actually had a lot of students before the ad drop deadline and so there were a lot of students asking us like how to add classes with permission numbers. We also got a lot of questions about change of major. The center is temporarily located in room D37 of building 52 until the remodel to the front of that building is complete. Make a Difference Day will be taking place this Saturday in San Luis Obispo. It is a nationally recognized day. We'll organized in, in slow by United Way and the Center for Community Engagement at Cal Poly. Volunteers will be placed at a variety of nonprofit or agencies throughout Slow County. Organizations is really, really helpful because you know they they're wanting these big projects that if they try to do without this help on this one day, you know they may it may take them you know a couple weeks or months to finish these projects, and they'll get them done in about a day thanks to this event. Service projects will go from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Contact the Cal Poly Center for Community Engagement for more in information. You don't have to go too far to find one of the most creative and thrilling corn mazes on the Central Coast. Christina Favuzzi goes out to the maze to see if she can make it through. It doesn't look too scary now, but by dusk, the Cal Poly Corn Maze becomes a destination for thrill seekers. The Crops Club has been working for a few weeks putting together the course, and they have a few tricks up their sleeve. I think the atmosphere of like college students actually scaring you is kind of cool. Now this isn't your average corn maze. There are cobwebs, coffins, and tombstones around every corner, and you never know when someone might jump out with a chainsaw. And they'll walk like that, and I'll come out and boom on their feet. So how long does it take to make it through the maze? Well, it might depend on how scared you are. It'd probably take me, and I know which way to go, a good 10, 15 minutes if I, you know, but I know every, and I cut the maze myself. But even the pros can get a little thrown off. So which way are we going now? Uh, I want to say, <laughs> I think this way. Don't get us lost. Yeah. You're supposed to know. I know, I am. The Cal Poly Corn Maze isn't for the faint of heart, but if you're feeling brave, come check it out this Friday and Saturday. Christina Favuzzi, Mustang News. The corn maze is on Mount Bishop Road off of Highland. It costs $5 to go through the maze. If you are headed downtown for Farmer's Market and need a ride, Slow Transit may be your solution. Slow Transit began testing an express loop that goes from the Cal Poly Performing Arts Center directly to the Downtown Transit Center. They say that because of a 35% increase in people using the bus during the hours of Farmer's Market, they are testing this new route to see if it's beneficial to students on campus. Farmers sometimes and being on the 4A or it's just jam-packed and it's crazy. So I think the 6E would actually make it a lot easier for students to go to Farmers. The route currently only runs on Thursday evenings and offers three loops between 6 and 7 p.m. Enzo's East Coast Eatery is moving locations. The popular late night food spot will be moving next to Slow Brew on Garden Street, but its previous location is changing its name. Enzo's general manager says the changes are happening because a deal with the partners who own the business fell through. The old location on Higuera has taken down its signs but is still serving food. Nobody knows what, what the new name will be, but we will find out in the coming weeks when they have their grand opening under a new name. A historic building in downtown San Luis Obispo is celebrating its 100th birthday. King David's Masonic Lodge opened its doors to the public on Sunday afternoon to help celebrate its 100th year in downtown San Luis Obispo. The four-story lodge was built in response to a growth in new membership and the need for a bigger space. And they decided they needed a grand uh, building that could be its, its meeting place forever. And so in 1913, they built this building. And so that was 100 years ago, and that's why we're celebrating that centennial. Welcome. Hundreds of Central Coast residents and tourists turned out for the event, which offered a unique look into the historic downtown structure. It included a tour of all four floors, an opportunity for visitors to ask questions, and a brief history on Freemasonry. For more information on King David's Lodge or Freemasonry, visit slowmasons.com. Coming up after the break, we will be taking a look at the weather. 
and the biggest sports game of the year is tomorrow night, we will preview the blue-green rivalry soccer game. Now for this weekend's weather, we go to Katie McDermott. Katie? Thanks, Jenna and Aaron. Well, let's start with your headlines. This week, we're going to be ranging from the mid to high 70s over the weekend. We're going to be around 75 tomorrow, um, and it's going to be getting a little foggy at night. It'll start to cool down throughout the weekend, and we're going to start to cool back down on Monday. It's going to be about 65. So let's go ahead and go to our weather map. Um, so... This week, we're mostly going to be in the 60s and 70s inland. We're going to have a high of 84 in Paso today, and it's going to be about 70 degrees in San Luis Obispo, 68 in Avila. As we move down the coast and stay on the coastline, it's going to be in the upper 60s. As we get closer to Santa Barbara, it'll be about 77 in the inland valleys and 69 in Santa Barbara. So if we can go ahead to our five-day forecast. So starting on Thursday, which is today, it's going to be about a high of 70, and it's going to be a low of about 49. We're going to be moving up in temperature throughout the weekend, moving into 80 on Saturday. So maybe want to lay out by the pool. Could be nice. Um, and as we move into Sunday, it'll start to cool down a little bit. Keep in mind, it's going to be chilly at night, high High 40s, low 50s, um, be sure to bring a jacket for tomorrow's soccer game. And once we hit Monday, it's going to be back at 65, going to be a bit cloudy again. So again, be sure to bundle up. Us Californians don't do so well with the cool weather. So back to you guys at the desk, and thanks. Thanks, Katie. And now switching over to sports. The Cal Poly Santa Barbara soccer match is tomorrow. And we have Trent Morfield here in studio to tell us all about the rivalry and more in sports. Trent. Thanks, guys. So tickets are sold out for this Friday's men's soccer game. And because this game sells out every year, the athletics department gave out one free ticket to each Cal Poly student. So students who have a ticket in advance on Friday will receive priority entrance to the stadium. And if you have already purchased your ticket, you just need to show your Cal Poly student ID at the gate to get in. Every year when Mustang fans mark their calendars, the most anticipated event they circle is the blue-green rivalry. Consistently drawing more than 10,000 people, the Cal Poly Santa Barbara men's soccer rivalry has come a long way. Rivalry. The highs. The lows. The moments that have been engraved into Cal Poly soccer history. According to collegenews.com, the Cal Poly UC Santa Barbara game has drawn 10 of the top 20 regular season crowds in NCAA history. Since the start of the 2007 season, 114,916 people have witnessed the blue-green clash. It's something that is so special. It's hard to explain in, uh, in words. I mean, you have to really be there to understand it, and uh, it's something that, you know, I don't think I'll ever get to experience anywhere else. The Mustangs snapped a 14-game losing streak at Harder Stadium last year thanks to an overtime goal by Mackenzie Pridham in the 96th minute. The win marked the Mustangs' fifth win in 16 matches against Santa Barbara under head coach Paul Holliker. It's fun. It's fun. I mean, I had people from, you know, probably four or five different states say that they were going to come in to watch the game. Athletic director Don Oberhelman has seen the transformation of the men's soccer program from in 2007 when a break the attendance record night was needed to gather 7,000 fans compared to last season when more than 11,000 people saw the blue-green clash at Alex G. Spano Stadium. You know, the soccer rivalry is between us and Santa Barbara what Duke and North Carolina are to men's basketball. Uh, it's the best so soccer rivalry in the United States. When Cal Poly men's soccer clashes with Santa Barbara, three things can be promised. It will be loud, it will be fun, and it will be talked about until next year's game. And tomorrow night, the game will be at 7 p.m. in Alex G. Spano Stadium. The Gauchos have a 10 and 5, 4 record overall, and they have not yet lost in conference. Cal Poly head coach Paul Holliker has a career record of 5 and 11 versus UC Santa Barbara, but the Mustangs are 5 and 2 at home this season. A player to watch for the Mustangs is senior forward Mackenzie Pridham, who just needs two goals to tie the Cal Poly career record of 26. For minute by minute coverage of the game, go to mustangnews.net and follow CP Mustang Sports on Twitter. You can also pick up the rivalry print edition of Mustang News on stands today. The Mustangs women's soccer team looks to extend their four-game winning streak to five as they travel to Santa Barbara to face the Gauchos. 
The ladies head into this match, and, and they are one and five in the big five and one, excuse me, in the Big West Conference, and nine and seven overall. They have sole possession of first place in the Big West. However, Cal Poly is three and six, heading on the road in this Friday's matchup. In all of the Mustangs' 16 matches this year, whichever team scored first has gone on to win. So let's hope the ladies will strike first tomorrow night in Santa Barbara. To celebrate the soccer game, there will be new activities offered during and after the event. Everyone that attends the game can go to the rec center to an after-game alternative called Inflatafest, which begins at 8 p.m. There will be inflatables, two hamster balls, and two large Q-tips. The Inter-Housing Council joined with ASI and Friday Night Live to organize the event for the first time this year. This new alternative gives students an option after the soccer game that doesn't involve alcohol, and the event will go until 12 a.m., and anyone is welcome to stop by. For more information, go to www.mustangnews.net. The Cal Poly football team returns to Spano Stadium this Saturday, and the Mustangs take on number 19-ranked Northern Arizona with kickoff at 6 p.m. Since the loss to Yale, the Mustangs have been fighting to get back into the top 25, and if they hope to be ranked, they'll need to rely heavily on their running game. With junior slot back Chris Tan Ivory is still ranked number two in the big sky with his average of 115 yards per contest, but the team will be looking to settle for not just three points. Extremely well last, last week. So number one, we have, to, we have to score touchdowns. We have the opportunity to score touchdowns, which we have not. There's the last couple of weeks we've had some opportunities and, and missed them. The Mustangs will be looking to get back on track with a win this weekend and hopefully break back into the top 25. And that's it for sports. Looking forward to that soccer game tomorrow night, you guys. Yeah, it should be very exciting indeed. After the break, find out which famous Food Network host will be coming to Cal Poly on Saturday. And what particular beach party is occurring this weekend. And now, Lisa Diaz is in the studio for Pollywood. Thank you, Jenna. Food Network host Alton Brown returns to Cal Poly after his sold-out show last year. His two-hour show will consist of stand-up comedy, food experimentation, live music, and multimedia lectures. Be prepared for some audience interaction as Brown may call on you to be his assistant. The show will take place at the Christopher Cohen Center inside the Performing Arts Center. Check out the Performing Arts Center website for more information. Empire of the Sun is coming to Avila Beach this Saturday. Otter Productions and Collective Effort events bring you the biggest Halloween beach party on the Central Coast. The band will be performing their Ice Dune USA tour. The band is an Australian electronic music duo from Sydney who formed in 2008. They are expecting over 3,000 people and costumes are encouraged. Cal Poly student and staff discounted tickets are available on campus via Polytix. Gates open at 5 p.m. Local band Proxima Parada is coming to Slow Brew this Friday night. All members of the band are Cal Poly graduates, and this will be their second time headlining here. Everyone should come see our show because it's going to be it's going to be fun. it's going to be really fun. Honestly, yeah. it's going to be fun. Everyone's going to be dancing. There's going to be good music. It's going to be a whole night of yeah. greatness. They call their music style a fusion of many genres, including blues, folk, soul, R&B, and even jazz. Doors open at 7 p.m. and tickets are $10 in advance or $12 at the door. Music will be taking over downtown slow this weekend. KCPR's third annual Flood Festival will feature live music and festivities all weekend long. The concert series kicks off Friday night with the Proxima Parada show at Slow Brew. Proceeds from all events go to KCPR and the development of a new venue for local artists and musicians downtown. It's about having different types of music be interpreted and enjoyed by anybody. Little Wings will play on Saturday night at Cruzberg alongside the Black Shirts and Lady Lazarus. Sunday's events include live music at Frog and Peach from noon until close. Music musicians Playing include Quinn DeVoe and The Beat, Review, and American Dirt, and Five Minus Two. Many activities are being planned for this year's Parents Weekend, including a campus performance.
Take It Slow is one of the a cappella groups on campus, and they're performing for the special weekend. The show is Saturday and starts at noon. Other activities for Parents Weekend include a tailgate barbecue for Saturday's football game and a University Union social hour. A sea of pink will move through downtown slow this Saturday for the Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk. The walk will begin in Mission Plaza before taking participants through the streets of downtown. Those interested can still register for the event through the American Cancer Society website or the walk before the walk begins. Day of event registration starts Saturday morning at 8 and the walk begins at 9. Thanks, Lisa. It sounds like there's a lot of exciting events happening this weekend. Definitely. Well, thanks for watching our weekly half-hour broadcast of Mustang News. You can watch our shows on Charter Channel 19, Campus Channel 2, and UHTV Channel 7. You can also find constant broadcast coverage on mustangnews.net. Have a great weekend, Cal Poly. And we're leaving you with the performance from the a cappella group, Take It Slow. Do, 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 do